Hello everybody and welcome to the next DLC speculation video where we're going to be covering another DLC idea that I have passionately um, created over the course of this year and a little bit of the end of last year. I'm fairly confident that this DLC could actually become a reality with the current mechanics in the game and of course with new developments happening in the game every update and every DLC this one is quite likely. This is the Coastal Animal Pack, a DLC that will be covering all semi-aquatic and fully aquatic animals. So basically the way fully aquatic animals would work in my mind would be having the um, habitat gate with a conjoining jetty to um, help the keepers walk in and release the, the animals into a body of water. That's my ideal way of doing it, but if there are any other ways to do it, please leave them down in the comments below. Um, or just aerial transport, right? Like that could that could be a possibility as well. Or a crane. You know, a crane could work as well. Like with the staff vehicles I speculated with the Antarctica pack, um, they bring in a crane carrying the aquatic animals like the manatee and the bottlenose dolphin and placing them in the tank via um, lifting them over the barrier and into the water. That is another way it could work. But without wasting any more time, let's get into it, shall we? So the, the flagship of this pack is the adorable sea otter, a species found um, in, on the co in the coastal waters of the Pacific Ocean from North America across to Japan. And they have the thickest fur of any mammal being so dense it keeps them warm in freezing cold water and they are also the smallest marine mammal and also one of the heaviest mustelids they have a few records they hold but one of the main characteristics of a sea otter is its foraging behavior and its lifestyle they will form a raft of, of kelp on the water's surface where they'll spend almost their entire lives Occasionally diving down to grab a crab, a clam, or an urchin, smash it with a rock on their bellies, and consume the juicy insides of their prey. Um, sea otters are in a few captive um, facilities and have been successful in housing them. Most of them are rescues, but with Planet Zoo's um, work, I'm sure they, they would be able to handle sea otters very well. We do already have two other otters, but the sea otter is by far the most unique left to go. The next animal, I was really tempted to put it as the flagship of this pack, but next is the always requested walrus. The walrus has been requested since the Arctic pack, even since the release of the base game. And hopefully this pack could finally bring the walrus into Planet Zoo. It is really the only one I can think of other than a polar animal pack if Frontier chose to do that. You could get the walrus, you could get the muskox and various penguins potentially. It would be an interesting one for sure. But the walrus by far is one of the largest pinnipeds. It is dwarfed by the um, southern and northern elephant seals because those guys are, they're heckin' chonkers. But um, the walrus is probably the most unique looking of, of pinnipeds, having a very different face to most others, adorning huge tusks, especially on the males, with a great moustache of whiskers that it uses to sift through the sand and collect clams and all sorts of other shellfish, using a vacuum to suck them out of their shells. But walrus would be a fantastic animal to see in the game. Next is would be our fourth penguin, the southern rockhopper penguin. A very tough animal as they are often knocked off rocks and have to bounce all the way down. But their, their specially built skeletons and muscles allow them to live through the pain and live in some of the toughest environments any penguin has to endure. They are distinct with their bright red eyes, their yellow crest and their bright orange beaks, making them a very eye-catching addition to the penguin roster. We don't have any crested penguins just yet, and the, and the southern rock offer was in Zoo Tycoon and Zoo Tycoon. Actually, hang on, it was only in Zoo Tycoon 2, I think. But either way, it's it has that prior um, 
zoo game representation, and it would make a fantastic addition. The brown pelican is the second most requested pe pelican in the game, the first being the great white pelican, which I was going to include, if not for one teensy little problem. Great white pelicans are more of an inland wetland um, pelican rather than a coastal species. So brown pelican was the much better choice given they are found on the coastlines on both um, coasts of North America into the Caribbean and um, all, to, all the way to South America as well. They have a very widespread distribution and would make a fine addition as a pelican species. Yeah. The first fully aquatic animal and probably the most controversial is the common bolt-nosed dolphin. They have been successfully housed in captivity for several years and can be successfully bred. With plants whose customized, customizable um, resources, you can build the greatest dolphin habitat ever and not be um, framed for animal cruelty <laughs> and all that sort of stuff. But bolt-nosed dolphin is an animal that is iconic of zoo games and is one of the most iconic animals on the planet and plant zoo not having a dolphin would kind of feel lacking as dolphins are very playful they could offer a very unique experience to players as well as manatees they are another marine mammal that is highly requested by the community and are found in various zoos and also live in both fresh and salt water so you could put them in a swamp or you could put them on a seagrass meadow but either way west india manatee it wouldn't be a very loud animal that's for sure but it would be a nice gentle creature to have in your riverine aquariums and zoos and yeah they're a very nice animal just <laughs> it's a manatee how can you not love them they would be a great addition to plant zoo nonetheless our last habitat animal is the green sea turtle, a semi-aquatic species as they come to shore to, to breed and to rest. So they would be able to use the terrain of Plant Zoo quite well, coming out onto the shore to rest and release their young, I guess. It would be cool if we got a turtle nesting mechanic where they actually laid their eggs in sand and a few months later, the eggs hatch. Uh, that would be a cool mechanic to have, but green sea turtle is a great species to see. As, yeah, sea turtles are beautiful creatures and would make a fantastic addition to Plant Zoo's aquatic roster. And our last animal is the coconut crab, <clears throat> one of the largest crabs in the world and one of the most voracious predators on many Pacific islands. Yeah, they eat many dead seabirds and I think I've been thought to have eaten people stranded on islands before. So, um, yeah, they're interesting. But what makes them more interesting is that they would be another exhibit animal, as I discussed in a previous video um, of this series. Exhibit animals being moved between the exhibits and habitats. Coconut crabs are certainly big enough to fit in a habitat and would be one of those um, qualifiable um, candidates. So, um, yeah, coconut crab. Fantastic addition. We don't have any crustaceans just yet, and coconut crab would be the perfect choice. On to a few unique enrichment items to do with our aquatic friends of the coast. We have um, some sort of sifting pits. So these would be a, the aquatic equivalent of a forage box. So you have a mud, either a mud one or a sand one, and with the mud one, that would be for the walrus, sifts through the sand and will occasionally. Um, scoop up a mussel or a clam. With a dolphin, it would sift through the sand, digging around, and a fish would pop out. Just has to be the 2D, um, 2D fish that um, come out of the underwater fish feeder. That doesn't have to be anything too special, but it will work nonetheless. And some urchin and clam clumps would be great. So like urchins on a rock, and maybe some clams on a rock. That's uh, for the sea otters to dive down and collect them on the sea floor and practice their regular foraging behaviors. And the last unique enrichment is, well, a seagrass meadow. So this could be like a sea, seagrass box in a sort of way. So these would be um, 
grazable items for the manatee and the green sea turtle to just chill out, graze on some seagrass and enjoy life. That's just what I'm thinking here. A few update features could include a variety of um, unique coastal scenery. So one being a new barrier type, um, marine netting. So it's not exactly netting, but it kind of is as well. <laughs> but basically this would be a bit of net, a bit of netting, anchored to the bottom with buoys, keeping it afloat so it acts properly as a barrier. And these would be a much more friendly and realistic use of keeping your aquatic animals in a habitat. So you basically attach these to the land as my idea of a coastal map would have the coast accessible to players and you put the barrier out into the deep water and stretch, stretch it back around to the shoreline. And that's how the animals are kept. And the career scenario I've thought of for this pack would involve you going to the coast of the um, Caribbean and taking care of various marine species um, in a variety of ways. So that's sort of my idea for that. Um, a new buoy enrichment item as well. Just a nice um, floating item for aquatic animals to knock around. Some granite columns. Wait, no, granite basalt columns, I mean. Need to get my rocks right here. Um, they're, they're a very cool formation in several parts of the world. You can see these great hexagonal p pillars on the coast. They're, they're a very interesting looking thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know how to describe them. I've never seen them in real life, but I certainly would love to. They just look so interesting, almost like Minecraft come to life. Um, also, placeable fake starfish, urchins, or anemones. That, that would be a great addition too, to sort of decorate your aquatic landscapes to make them feel a little bit more alive. Speaking of more alive, um, giant kelp is a new placeable plant. Um, this is the largest algae in the world and would be a, a fantastic addition to Plant Zoo's aquatic environment, giving a very unique look to your California sea lion and sea otter enclosures and some new coastal rocks as well would be a good thing to see as well, just a new coastal rock set. All these rounded rocks um, have been eroded by waves, that sort of thing. And a few last um, things. Neptune grass is another type of seagrass that could be added to the game, creating great carpets um, on the floors of your aquatic enclosures. Um, a few more coastal maps as well, just so that you can access the coastal biome in the base game and proper wave function that's just a, another thing i added in there other than that not too many other features i did originally have the atlantic puffin in here and this would be sort of the um jump start for aviaries but i think i might save that for the actual avery dlc speculation video uh we'll see but um yeah that's all i've got right now um i did cut down the content a little bit for the Coastal Animal Packers, I've covered pretty much anything else that would have been featured in here um, in previous videos, like the barrier stretching and sealing tops for the enclosures or habitats, that sort of thing. But um, if you like the idea of this pack, um, do leave a like and subscribe for more content. And I'll be doing Primates and Avery next. So look forward to that. Um, yeah, those, those are going to be some interesting ones to make. Yeah, but if you enjoy Coastal, I'm sure you'll enjoy them. And yeah, with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.